Community College presents NCAA Men's Basketball, a non-conference ball game when it was supposed to be a CA battle, but we've got a ball game nonetheless. It's the Dukes of James Madison entertaining the Morgan State Bears from the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference here at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. And you're joining us on Flow Sports. Good evening and Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Kurt Dudley, and the last time the Dukes played, it was December the 22nd as Matt Lewis Helped to lead the Dukes back from nearly a 20-point deficit. Well, almost, as the Dukes did come up a little shy, falling to the Rams of Virginia Commonwealth on the 22nd at the Siegel Center, 82-81. to Lewis uh, led the Dukes back uh, through that comeback, racking up 21 points, 12 rebounds, and 7 assists. And uh, Jalen Hodge added 15 points. So did Michael Christmas. But again, the Dukes did fall shy. But there was a lot of positive coming out of that ball game. The Dukes uh, came back to Harrisonburg with a record of 3-3. Three and three. We're hoping to play the Towson Tigers this weekend, all set up to do so, but uh, the Tigers have to go into quarantine as they have a COVID situation there. And uh, although the this is the opening weekend of the CAA, there were two sweeps, Hofstra over William & Mary, and it was Northeastern over Elon, and then uh, a couple of uh, one split, that was Delaware, and the College of Charleston, and then two no-goes, including JMU and Towson and UNCW and Drexel. But we do have this game here tonight, the Dukes and the Morgan State Bears. The Bears coming in with a record of 3-2. and two. The Dukes are 3-3. Three and three. First time since 2001 these programs have met on the men's hardwood, and the Dukes lead the series 8-1. to one. Uh, The first meeting back in 1976 in the consolation game in the Division II NCAA tournament held and hosted by Old Dominion. Uh, the Dukes lost to the Monarchs, then lost to Morgan State. But since that time, in the meetings between these programs, JMU has won the last eight, all of them here in Harrisonburg. So we do welcome, whether you're a fan of the Dukes or a fan of the Bears, for joining us tonight on this broadcast here on Flow Sports. And we're going to pause for tonight's national anthem here on Flow Sports. As we honor the United States of America and those who defend our freedom at home and abroad with the playing of our national anthem. the Dukes and the Bears will play here at the Atlantic Union Bank Center the uh, second game during this calendar year here at the, the Atlantic Union Bank Center because earlier today the JMU women came from a 15 point deficit to defeat Towson in the CA opener 89 to 85 let's take a look at the starting lineups today first of all for the visitors from Morgan State out of Baltimore Maryland and they will start uh, Lagio Gronstan, who is uh, 6'8", 235 pound, a senior from the Netherlands. Troy Baxter, leading scorer, 6'9", 200 pound, senior from Tallahassee, Florida. And Sherwin Devonish, 6'1", 192 pounder from Bladensburg, Maryland. Malik Miller, 6'4", 191 pounds from Washington, D.C. And lastly, Trevor, uh, Trevor Moore, that is, 6'5", 195 from Houston, Texas. And let's take a look at our player to feature for the Morgan State Bears. He is Malik Miller. Uh, good all-around game does this young man possess. 13.8 points per game, 8.2 rebounds, and uh, nearly two assists per contest. Very good at the free throw line, as you can see there, at 81.5% shooting. Kevin Broadus is in his second season with the Bears. I'm going to step aside and let you enjoy the festivities before
And Mark Byington in his first year as the head coach of the Dukes of James Madison uh, cobbling together this schedule. Uh, and In fact, the Dukes just today have added another game. That's Tuesday against the Owls of Florida Atlantic University out of Conference USA. They'll be facing Old Dominion next weekend in conference play, so they're going to be in the Commonwealth a little early. We'll play them here on a Tuesday. Here's the starting lineup for the Dukes, again brought to you by Atlantic Union Bank. Justin Amati, a freshman's very, been very impressive. 6'7 out of Greensville, South Carolina. Terrell Strickland, a 6'1", 170-pounder, a freshman from Tampa, Florida, set a school record with 10 steals here in the opener. Jalen Hodge, 6'1", 180 pounds from O'Fallon, Illinois, has had three consecutive good games for the Dukes, averaging 10 points during that stretch. Julian Wooden, a sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia's Northside High School, 6'8", 225, off to a good start his sophomore campaign, 9.5 points per game. And Matt Lewis, 6'5", 200 pounder, a senior from Woodridge, Virginia, last time we had Matt with us, well, we, he was 50 points away from tying Kent Coluco for third all-time at JMU in career scoring. Well, he has done so. And let's go to Michael Christmas, uh, even though he is not in the starting lineup today. Uh, he, too, is somebody to talk a little bit about as uh, the last couple of ball games. He put in, now, that was against Alice Lloyd, as well as against VCU. Five rebounds, two assists. Uh, trying to work himself back in shape. He has uh, been one of those players that's kind of been on again, off again, start and stop as the team has at a, as a whole. It's probably hampered Michael's uh, comeback, uh, if you would, uh, more than anybody else uh, among the guys that uh, return to this team. But we're looking forward to seeing, I'm looking forward to seeing just to what he can do tonight and what uh, Jalen Hodge can do tonight after their good ball games here very recently for James Madison as we are underway at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. First men's game of the 2021 calendar year. Let's hope this year is much better for all of us and Happy New Year to one and all as well. Dan Malik Miller had the basketball and we've got a stoppage of play and it looks like um, Granson is hurt. Whether he jammed a thumb or I'm not sure how that actually happened was not watching the, that part of the action but uh, he has jammed a thumb, it appears, or maybe twisted a wrist. He's holding his right wrist now that I can see it much more clearly. And uh, Miller will trigger in with 16 seconds to go on the possession clock. Devinish with the basketball, guarded there by Strickland. And that's lost by Malik Miller. And trying to come up with a loose basketball is Terrell Strickland. And Sean Hall, one of the officials today, calls a foul. And that is called on Devinish. That's his first, team first. So the Dukes with their first offensive possession here this evening. Again, the JMU women winning earlier today. It was a good comeback. They were down by 15 with just over four minutes to go in the third quarter and one by four. Down low it goes, and there's an easy layup from Amadi on the assist from Matt Lewis. And Amadi... Puts the Dukes on the board, averaging 7.8 points per ball game as this freshman from Greenville, South Carolina. And that's extra steps. Second turnover for Morgan State. Now the Bears do have a victory. They were supposed to play Towson, as we do see uh, Granson going out. And coming in is Victor Okafor. Okafor, a 6'8", 230-pounder from Greenbelt, Maryland, went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School and a transfer, one of a couple from Baltimore City Community College, and Wooden takes an additional step before he gets started. But the uh, Tigers, uh, excuse me, the Bears were scheduled to face the Tigers and the Lions, oh my, um, on Wednesday, but then Towson had a COVID situation arise and so the Tigers are not playing this weekend and so that opened up space for Morgan State and JMU to play. Morgan State scheduled to open up league play in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference next weekend. The Dukes are scheduled to go to Elon and there's a three-pointer dropped in by Devinish who has the first points for Morgan State and Devinish averaging 5.6 points per game, 2.4 rebounds. And losing the handle is Jalen Hodge for the Dukes. 
So 3-2 Morgan State in the early going. And the Dukes have added uh, Florida Atlantic University to the schedule. That game slated for Tuesday afternoon here at 4 o'clock. We'll also have that ball game, of course, for you here on Flow Hoops. Is Devinish as he works his way around to the top at the JMU logo. Dukes in the man-to-man. -man. They cut it off, expecting the cut down inside the left wing, and the Dukes defend it well. Devinish with another three-point try, and he hits yet another. Devinish has six, and uh, he was 0 for 1 coming into today's contest on three-pointers. 10 for 30 from the field. Duke's kind of packing it in. Here goes Lewis, and he is fouled going up. Malik Miller tried to time the jump, but he got enough of the arm of Lewis. We'll see it again here as Matt with his first opportunity to move into well, that looked like he got mostly basketball from that angle, but maybe there was some body contact in there. Here's Lewis going to the free throw line, a 79% free throw shooter this year, and there is point number 1,702, which moves him away from his third-place tie with Kent Coluco for third all-time. On the Jamie scoring charts, next up it's Sherman Dillard, but... Dillard, now an assistant coach at Iowa, finished with 2,065. An offensive opportunity and a possible stick back. Devinish can't come up with it. Rebound controlled by Hodge. Jalen runs it into the forecourt. Here's Strickland. Strickland got up into no man's land, but finds Amadi, who was fouled going up, trying to slam it down. See it again here. Strickland dumps it off, and here comes Amadi. And that's the third foul on the Bears already. Amadi at the free throw line, five out of eight this season. At 16 points in the opener against Limestone, he had a bunch of dunks in that ball game. Body back to the free throw line. Went to Paul Dorman High School. 6'7", 220 pounds. He is a freshman from Greenville, South Carolina. Right there where Furman is located. Rattles around for the free throw. 6'6", six, six our score. A couple of trays for the Bears. The Dukes have made most of their hay at the free throw line thus far. Here's on the run. Baxter. And a foul, and he'll get a chance to go for the new four-point play. As opposed to the traditional three-point play. And Baxter pulls up for the tray. The foul is on Wooden. Julian picking up his first. Baxter at the free throw line, sinks it. So a four-point play for Baxter, who averages a team-high 16.8 points per game, second in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And a hard shot for Lewis, and the follow-up for Julian Wooden. Wooden has his first bucket, averages nine and a half points per game. And a foul called on Okafor coming off the bench. He has his first foul. Correction, that's his second. I had missed a foul, and that was the one I had missed. So the Dukes will inbound in their own backcourt. Here is uh, Terrence Edwards also in the lineup for the Dukes. Uh, Edwards, 6'6", 190-pounder from Atlanta, Georgia. I really like the energy he brings to the game. And here comes Strickland underneath with a reverse layup. Terrell is in the scoring column. He's the fifth Duke to get there, and the Dukes with balance scoring for the 10-10 balance score. Miller drives in the paint, actually gives it up to Baxter, who drives, and Miller with the follow-up. Who 
Lewis thought about the three, will drive inside to kick out. Here is Terrell Strickland. No good. And the rebound controlled by the visitors from Morgan State. Long range three. That's way up top as Trevor Moore hits his seventh three-pointer of the year, a 29% shooter from beyond the arc. And he makes it a 15-10 tally in favor of Morgan State. And the Bears do have a victory over Delaware. And here comes Amadi as he gets clobbered as getting up into the air was Moore, his first personal foul. So Amadi will get a chance to go back to the free throw line, but we won't do that until we step aside for a commercial break. Dukes down 15 to 10, the early going in this one. The Dukes and the Bears here on Close Boots. Fifteen ten, Morgan State with a few outside shots to take the uh, five-point lead, our first media timeout. And we'll have Justin Amati with a couple of free throws. And JMU Fans Food Line is the proud sponsor of the Score to Give More program for each free throw the Dukes make in today's game. Food Line Feeds will donate 100 meals to the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank. And again, uh, Happy New Year to one and all and a healthy year as well. Actually, I thought they were going to give in free throws. I guess they're not as uh, we get play underway. And a blocking foul called against Miller. Uh, Bra Baxter, that is. That's his uh, first. The six-team foul already by Morgan State, and we've just started play after the first media timeout, which comes at the first stop to play 16 minutes in. This is Votto Morris. We haven't seen Votto for a couple of games. He twisted an ankle at East Carolina, missed the last two games of the 2020 calendar. And that will stay right there at that end of the court on a foul on the rebound. That's foul number seven against Morgan State. Miller has his second foul, so that's a concern for Kevin Broadus and the Bears. And Zach Jacobs goes to the free throw line. 6'8", 235-pounder from Richmond, Virginia's Trinity Episcopal. 3.3 points per game, 3.7 rebounds, and 5 out of 5 at the free throw line. Michael Christmas has also checked in for James Madison. This is a 1-1, one one, so missing the front end rebound, tracked down by Baxter. Looking for a screen is Mo Camera. And pulling up a sweet looking shot in the keyhole, Taj Malik Campbell. Sophomore from Philadelphia, PA, makes it a seven point spread. And that is a miss for Matt Lewis, quickly the outlet and may have just been slightly altered by Lewis, but Campbell scores back-to-back -back buckets. It's 19-10. Strickland to Christmas. Morse, again, twisted his ankle against East Carolina. Certainly would have liked to have had him in the ball game at VCU. Matt Lewis had to carry a lot of the load in that ball game for the Dukes, and it was JMU with the turnover. Dukes three out of seven from the floor. The Bears cooking it pretty good. Seven out of ten and four out of five on three-pointers. Also a four, well, actually it's four-four in rebounding. And that's a turnover. Trying to get it inside and down low to Venning. And... Somebody lost uh, something. <laughs> On the floor, and it's been cleared up. Lewis smacks the basketball, gets it into Edwards. Terrell out of Georgia. Otto Morris, transfer from Mount St. Mary's. And a blocking foul as. 
Lewis with the Euro step tried to drive the middle of the lane is fouled. Well, Kamara picks up his first personal foul and Lewis at the stripe. And for the Bears, uh, reporting back in is Granson. And the Dukes will report back in Amadi, so double zeros reporting back in. Lewis connects on the free throw. He has three. Duke's down by eight. Top of the circle. Lewis comes out to defend and still trying and working his way through, showing some strength there. Detorian Ware coming off the bench and fouled in the backcourt. This time it's Nassim Khalid that is called for the foul. Dukes have an opportunity to make up a lot of ground and get a lot of points here in this first half simply at the free throw line because the Bears are committing a ton of fouls. It's 9-1. to one. Morris has his first points of the 2021 calendar year. Hodge will check back in. Uh, looks like he will come in for Morris if he hits the shot. The Bears will sub up Sharon Wright, a junior from Macon, Georgia. A transfer from Wake Forest. Morris, one out of two, and the rebound. Knocks out and boarded by Ware. This is Camara. is Khalid from the corner. He'll step, still a three-pointer off the iron weak side rebound. It's pulled in by Michael Christmas. Christmas to the middle of the court. Will stop and finds Lewis. Swings it right side. Morse gets his man in the air, takes the three off the front of the iron. Rebound controlled Amadi. And he stepped on the sideline. Jalen Hodge will check back in for the Dukes. Seen a lot uh, in the early goings of this facility. A lot of folks stepping out on the sidelines. It's happened nearly every game. I don't think it happened actually in the women's game today, but I'd say in most of the games that have been played here, we've seen that quite a bit. Twelve on the shot clock. Tested three-pointer off the back of the iron rebound, tracked down, but batted around. Here comes Hodge as Edwards gets it to him, and Hodge with the circus move gets his first basket tonight. 7.5 points per game, and he's shooting at 35%. That's his 10th field goal of the season. And he had 9, 12, and, and 15. No, 9, 6, and 15 in the last three games. Three-pointer, in and out, won't go. Rebound controlled by Lewis. Lewis nearly had the triple-double at VCU. Seven assists in that ball game as the Dukes came up shy and Edwards is pickpocketed and laying it up. No, he'll miss the quasi layup dunk he couldn't quite decide what to do with it and it's kicked out of bounds and a foul is on Javis Harvey I think they call it on no correction make that Jalen Hodge his first I thought he said 14 Dukes down by 7 11 33 to go in the first half NCAA men's basketball tonight on Flow Hoops.
Okay. Twenty-one fourteen, Morgan State leading the Dukes of James Madison. And Atlantic Union Bank is a proud sponsor of the Dukes and the official banking partner of JMU Athletics. If you're ready to bank better, visit AtlanticUnionBank.com or shop at a branch today. Member FDIC. Baxter turnaround, no good rebound, ripped down off the rim. It's Amadi grabbing the board. His first or make that second of the day. So with Lewis, Amadi, Hodge, Harvey, and Christmas. Back door, and there is Amadi that lays it in softly this time on a beautiful pass. Six points for Amadi. That's the third assist for the Dukes on five field goals. Outstanding percentage if they can keep up that pace, and a foul. Matt Lewis trying to make up ground. That is his first. Third team foul, the nine fouls on the Bears, and Ware hits a three-pointer. That's his seventh of the season with a 37.5% shooting percentage from beyond the arc coming in. Lewis will try to answer, cannot do so. On the board, the Rebound goes uh, to the floor, that is. Here is Hodge. Can't get open. Hodge, the transfer from Louisiana Monroe. And that's off the hands of the Bears out of bounds. Hodge, 15 points at BCU is his JMU career high. His collegiate career high was 22 against Grambling. when he was playing further south, and he's out of Illinois. There's a three-pointer, a little flat on the arc for Michael Christmas. Hodge off the back of the iron, rebound fought for, and it's controlled by Morgan State. It's Miller coming up with it in the corner. Another three-pointer, this one from the opposite side. Ware has his second three-pointer, eight on the evening. And his average is 8.6. Dukes down by 11. Here goes a circus shot for Matt Lewis, who has five. Brings the Dukes to within 27 to 18. Six out of 10 on three-pointers is Morgan State. 10 out of 18 from all points on the floor, so 60 and 56% respectively. The Dukes, six out of 14, 43%, but 0 for 7 on three-pointers. Hustling rebound, and that is partially deflected. I think Amadi got a piece of it as Moore was trying to go back up with it. Here is Lewis. Sends it out. Michael Christmas, three-pointer. There's the first one of the night for the Dukes. 
and the sixth of the season for Michael Christmas, who came in shooting 42% from beyond the arc. Makes it a six-point spread. The Dukes just a couple of three-pointers away. That pass is a little low. Dukes get a little run out. Here goes Lewis as he will two-hand the dunk. Lewis with seven, and the Dukes pulled it within four. Devinish will bring it up, and they will weave out top with more. Baxter steps back off the iron. That came off so fast that Davis Harvey could not respond to it quickly enough. Strickland comes back in. Morris back in for the Dukes. Amadi stays in. Christmas stays in. Lewis takes the breather. Averaging uh, 34 points. Excuse me, 34 minutes per game in his JMU career. 34 and a half. He has not sat very much since he put on a JMU uniform. Otto Morris gets his first personal foul. Fourth team foul. Oregon State has slowed down its fouling rate. Into the backcourt it goes to Khalid. Out of Sumter, South Carolina, went to a First Coast High School, which is actually in Florida. It was kicked out, but picked up by the Bears. We'll try the other wing, and three-pointer is off the iron. Buzzer sounded, but the Dukes get the rebound, and here they go back down the floor. Here is Christmas. And what do they call? A blocking foul is called on Baxter. That's his second. I'm not quite sure about that one. Maybe we'll get a chance to see it as we roll out into our commercial break. Dukes will take it regardless as they trail by four, 27 to 23. Let's see if we can get this one for you. Here comes Lewis. Oh, yes, he was. Oh, that's an earlier shot by Lewis. And the slam dunk as well. Back with more JMU basketball on Flow Hoops. To schedule your appointment today. 27-25, Morgan State's Bears leading the Dukes of James Madison. Dukes so on a run, a 9-0 run to trim that deficit. Uh, that's over the last 2.30. Be sure to check out the official online store for JMU Athletics at jmusportshop.com. The JMU Bookstore is a proud partner of JMU Athletics. At the free throw line, it is Michael Christmas. Christmas with six points. And the Dukes down by one. We'll stop play with a whistle. 12 Mensa has come in for the Dukes, his first personal foul, averaging two points per game, 6'10 out of Ghana. And a five second, but no, they call a timeout, do they? Yes, they do call the timeout. Dukes are celebrating like they had a uh, five second violation, but they do force the timeout call by Morgan State. Virginia women are on the road uh, coming up Tuesday. They'll face uh, Towson in the second game of that series. Uh, Dukes beating them earlier today. Next home game is next Saturday against the Seahawks of UNC Wilmington. Seahawks lost today to Drexel. And that game not only on Flow Hoops, but also on NBC Sports Washington. Clint Estes will join me for the call here at the Atlantic Union Bank Center as will Allie Barefoot. She'll join us also. Free reign to the basket, but no kicking, kicking it out. This time he'll take the shot, does Kamara. And getting a little fancy on the passing, and Campbell 
zips it past his teammate off the end line. Turnover for Morgan State. Bears have their sixth miscue. The Dukes also have six turnovers. With 7.20 remaining, Moore springs it up for the Dukes. Gets it over to Christmas. They weave it out front. Morris, Edwards. Christmas takes the three-pointer, tries to run into it. Can't get it to fall. A little shy. Granson with the rebound. Ten out of 23 are the Morgan State Bears. They've chilled down a little bit. I think they've missed their last six shots. They were 10 for 17 at one point, and a kick by Edwards forces the bear to the floor in a foul on JMU. That's the sixth in this half. Bears have gone on a drought. Yeah, they've missed their last six shots, two out of their last 13. So at one point, they were eight for 11. They're 10 out of 24, and they've had a scoring drought of three minutes and 45 seconds. Ooh, and that is batted away by Mensa. You could hear him go up and volley the ball away from the hoop. Take it, watch it again. Here it comes to you. So went up and got that one. the Dukes within one score. Miller. Three-pointer from the right wing, no good. Rebound battled for. Morgan State really good at keeping the ball alive on the offensive end. Actually, just period on both ends. We get a jump ball, says Sean Hull, and the possession error favors James Madison. Here's another look at that block. Nope, get out of here. Demensa with a couple of minutes and uh, was effective during his stretch. So he headed back over to the bench area. Here is Strickland. Christmas to Lewis. Works around and he is tripped going by. And that's foul number 10, so the Dukes in the bonus over the next six minutes. And Miller has his third foul. He is the first player with three fouls in this ball game. Lewis goes to the free throw line, shooting two more. Seven points for Matt. <laughs> Lewis gets the favorable roll off the iron. Eight points. And we're tied at 27. The Dukes trailed. By as many as 11. That's uh, when it was 27 to 16. And that handle is lost. It goes off the Bears. And the Dukes will maintain possession. Or will gather the possession. Lewis will bring it up for the Dukes. He finds Morse. Julian Wooden back in, back door cut, and here goes the slam for Lewis, his second of the ball game. That one out of the set play, and the Dukes senior in double figures once again. This is his 101st career game, and his 87th career ball game with double figure points. Three-pointer by Khalid.
And here goes the drive, and a charge is called against the Duke's Julian Wooden. That's his second foul. Also a turnover for James Madison. Michael Christmas will report back in for Coach Mark Byington. His assistants, Andrew Wilson, Xavier Joyner, John Crimmins, full-time staff. Of course, he's got other gentlemen on his staff as well. A little wraparound pass and an easy finish for Ware as that puts him in double figures with 10. We're up to 10 points. He had 24 points against Lincoln of PA earlier this year. Bears have recaptured lead 32-29. And that's called against the Bears. Not sure what it is. Amadi thought it was on him, but they were calling it on Granston. Oh, there, I see it. Yep, he gave him for a block. Granston's first personal foul. That's an offensive foul, so no shots for the Dukes who have committed seven infractions. So both teams can shoot free throws from here on out. That's a zipped in pass and Amati will slam it down. The assist for Strickland. Amati has eight. Christmas rather with the rebound. All right, so this is the uh, highest total for Amadi in three games. And count that one for Matt Lewis as he continued on. Lewis with a dozen points. He slides on through, makes contact, and scoops it up for the bucket. Dukes lead it by one, 33-32. Amadi with a dunk. He's got eight. Back with more of JME basketball on Flow Hoops in just a couple of moments.
33-32, JMU with the one-point lead against the Bears of Morgan State. Game number two today, game number one this afternoon was won by those ladies right there. JMU women's basketball Dukes over the Tigers of Towson University. 89-85, to we'll take a look at that game in depth and detail at halftime as Lewis completes the three-point play. And Matt Lewis with 13 points. He continues to climb up the charts. And that's 17, 14 at the moment. A long ways to go to catch Sherman Dillard. That's six, uh, excuse me, 2065. And the crossover and the uh, Euro step for Lewis makes an easy path to the bucket, uh, bucket that is. And it's 36-32. Uh, Shot, no good. Rebound is the Michael Christmas. Christmas has his fourth board. The Dukes with a 16 to 14 advantage off the glass. Both teams hustling, really battling for missed shots and those possessions. 13 on the shot clock. Here's Strickland. Lewis, he'll take that three. And running out of the corner was Hodge. That's where the ball was headed. But it ends up out of bounds, so the possession goes over to Morgan State. Again, the 10th uh, all-time meeting between the programs. Dukes lead at 8-1. The first meeting was 1976 down in Norfolk. Probably played at the Scope because it was an NCAA tournament game. Might have been at the Fieldhouse. Uh, I think uh, Old Dominion was playing at the Scope at that time for men's basketball. Batted away by Lewis. A little useless trivia. The first college basketball game I attended was at the Scope, and it was Old Dominion and St. Bonaventure. About that 76-77 time. Monarchs won that one, by the way. Taken away by Strickland. He is the chief thief for the Dukes, and he passes it off to Michael Christmas with the emphatic dunk for the Dukes, 38-32. Branson to the right wing. Shot from the corner pocket, no good. And, oh, last touch by the Dukes. I think Christmas knocked it out. Dukes have hit five of their last six shots. The Bears, two of their last 14. And, and another scoring drought, this time of 336. Dukes with a 22 to 5 run over the last nine minutes as we close in on halftime. Michael Christmas charged with his first personal foul of 2021. And more. This is the free throw. Moore gets one out of two. He's got four points. Coach Mark Byington, in his first season at the helm of the Dukes, a native of Salem, Virginia, played for Jerry Wainwright at UNCW, and he was instructing the Dukes to take a timeout once they got it past half court, and they do so. This is the use it or lose it timeout, so the Dukes will go ahead and use this one here. Try to set up something on this possession with 102 remaining in the first half of play.
Well, next scheduled game beyond the FAU game is uh, on the 16th of January. The Dukes are scheduled to host the Phoenix of Elon. And that game not only on Flow Sports, but also on NBC Sports Washington. On January 16th at 2 o'clock. That's the Saturday game. And the way they're setting it up, they'll play Saturday and Sundays, back-to-back -back days against the same opponents. Of course, the schedule, uh, as this game is part of, subject to adjustments. Following the miss on the three-pointer, Morgan State coming up with the rebound. Arcing three-pointer, a little too strong. Rebound for Devinish. Ware in the corner, got Strickland up in the air, steps inside the two-point arc and hits it. It's a two-pointer from the corner for Ware. Ware with a dozen. Shot clock is turned off. Duke's up by three. Looking to extend that margin before they go into the locker room. Here's the drive. Strickland finds himself in traffic. Call for steps. So now let's turn it over to Morgan State who hopes to whittle or tie, into, tie the lead before going into the locker room. Campbell will trigger in. And the ball stolen away. Here is Christmas. Long range three. It hits the backboard, but that's all it connects with. So the Dukes will go into the locker room here at the Atlantic Union Bank Center, leading by a triple. 38 to 35. Dukes were down by a margin of uh, at, at 11 with 10-28 uh, to go, but they have... Uh, Control plays over the last half of this first half. We have our halftime coming up. We'll review the Dukes women's basketball win over Towson when we return here on Flow Hoops. Let's take a look at, excuse me there. Let's take a look at uh, the first half highlights. The Dukes leading at 38-35 uh, here at the break. And the Bears getting off to a pretty hot start. Uh, they hit a good number of their early shots at one time, a 10 for 17 from the field. Brown Strickland with the layup there for the Dukes. A long range three that was connected by Trevor Moore. It was his first bucket of the night. And with a hot hand is Victorian Ware, who's got 12 points in the first half. Dukes, though, of course, Matt Lewis getting into the mix. Michael Christmas splashing down a three-pointer on the Lewis assist. Here comes Lewis on a two-handed dunk on a run out for James Madison. Javis Harvey again down this time the foul and the bucket for Michael Christmas who goes to the free throw line. Couldn't convert on the three-point play. And a monster block by Joel Mensa, who is a transfer for the Dukes from San Diego State in the back door and the one-handed dunk for Lewis. From the outside, another three-pointer. That one knocked in from Khalid. And here is Strickland on the run for the Dukes, and he'll leave it for Christmas with a authoritative jam shot for James Madison. So 38-35 here at intermission, and we'll take another break. We'll come back and look at stats. I think we've got some scores from around the CA for you as well when we return to Harrisonburg.
The Dukes 38, the Bears 35. Take a look at our first half statistics for you as the Dukes shooting at 56%, uh, Morgan State at 35%. Dukes are only one out of 11 on three pointers though. Uh, 39% are the Bears as they have hit seven of 18. Duke 69% the free throw line, while the Bears are 67%. Uh, Morgan State with a plus three in rebounds. Dukes with a plus one in turnovers, and both teams with eight assists. Now one thing, the Dukes have 26 points in the paint, and uh, 13 points off turnovers. And there's a look again at uh, continue our stats. And then looking at uh, some of the leading players in this ball game, Lewis with the 15, Ware with 12. Everybody else in single digits, Amadi with eight. That's his uh, best output in four games. He's got uh, three, let's see, Amadi's got, uh, he had three games in double figures. He had 16 in the opener, 10 in game two against Norfolk State, also had 10 against East Carolina, but two and seven the prior two games, so he's got eight here uh, this evening. And Morgan State, uh, 10 points off the bench to lead that category. Some out-of-town scores, uh, men's basketball today. Uh, Northeastern uh, sweeping Elon, the 66-58 today's final. William & Mary gave Hostra two good challenges, but the Pride sweeps that series 82-73. And Charleston got back one on Delaware, so that goes one and one this weekend. It's interesting talking about uh, sweeps in basketball uh, for a weekend series. It's more like baseball or softball in terms of lingo, but that's the schedule we were dealt with this year. And do you expect it to, uh, we'll have to navigate through a lot of this as we go through the month of January and February. Get a foul on Morgan State to open up the second half. That's one thing the Bears did a lot of. And the foul is called against Malik Miller no, beg your pardon. Uh, it goes against um, Granston, his third. Ramadi lost the handle and it just comes free. And the Dukes are fortunate to come out with a fortuitous bounce. Lewis, 11 on the shot clock. Wooden, Wooden's been quiet offensively for the Dukes today. And there's Jalen Hodge with the three pointer. It's his first tray of the night, his seventh of the season. And the Dukes open up a six-point advantage. Here goes Miller into the corner. Got to keep an eye on those guys at their corner pocket. They like to shoot from that spot. Here comes Strickland running down the floor for the Dukes. We'll kick it out. Here's Hodge again. Does he hit back-to-back -back threes? Nope. On the miss. Rebound. Miller, the outlet, goes to Braxton. Lost it back to Miller, and he'll drop it in. Good teamwork, passing up and down the floor for the Morgan State Bears. That brings the Bears to within four, 41-37. So Amadi Lewis, Strickland, Hodge, Wooden, and Morris leading things off here for the Dukes. And there's the first bucket tonight for Julian Wooden from beyond the arc. It's his second of the day. Second field goal, that is. He's got five points. That's his seventh tray this season. And Nearly out of bounds, but tracking it down. Wrapping the pass around, and that's on the end line. A turnover for the Bears. Hodge got to get it in, and he does so to Strickland. Two minutes into the second half. Strickland will drive. And the one-handed layup is good as he just lofted it on up. Little Statue of Liberty look going up with it. Strickland getting in the mix. Devonish three-pointer left wing flat off the iron. And JMU basketball. Well, Camaro comes back in for the Bears, averaging a point per game, a rebound per contest. He did play in the first half. He's 
defending as Strickland brings it up the court for JMU. Drops it off, here's Wooden. Lewis, harassed a bit, ball tapped. And here from the corner, no Wooden will drive, pulls up, changes his hand in the shot, comes up a little shy with it. Moore from the wing, rattles around, comes off the iron, ripped down by Wooden. Lewis drives, pulls up at the CA logo, leaves it for Amadi, can't slam it, and the ball comes out free to the visitors. Here goes Kamara, and a blocking foul called against JMU, and count that one against Julian. I'll make that Jalen Hodge, rather. Beg your pardon. Hodge has his second foul. Hmm. So Hodge picks up his second foul. Jalen with five points. Christmas keeping an eye on their output today with, thir with eight points. So 13 between the two of them thus far. I'd like to see a uh, good 25-30 out of those two. Kamara, his first bucket. It's a free throw. Well, he was one for two coming in. Zach Jacobs checks back in for the Dukes. Played for a brief stint in the first half. Did not score. Two for two, and it's 46-39. Dukes have had a 13 to nothing run. They've led by as many as nine, and that's here in this half. Here's Jacobs backing down, spins around. Left-handed layup is good. Scoops it up, does Zach Jacobs. Lost the handle. Leaving the pass ahead for Morse. Morse trying to leave it for Lewis. And a man steps in front, and that is Miller. Ball just got a little in front of everybody and ended up just being an exchange of possession. Miller on the baseline is cut off by a pair of Dukes. Three-pointer from the outside. It's Moore. No good. He'll get it right there. Tries again. And this time he connects. He has seven points. That's his second tray. 48-42. Lewis. And a charge is the call. Lewis dipped his shoulder and plunges into him for the foul and the turnover. Second foul for Lewis. And that takes us to immediate timeout, 15.37 to go in our action here this evening at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. Back with more JMU men's basketball against the Bears of Morgan State in just a moment.
We got anything coming out of this, John? Stay on that split screen when we open. And yeah, the coaches opposing one another today. Mark Byington there for the Dukes on the left and Kevin Broadus on the right. Broadus in his second season and Byington in his first. Byington, the former UNCW Seahawk. Dukes are scheduled to play at UNCW next weekend. Well, the Seahawks, they had. Uh, a COVID stoppage. They did not play Drexel. They made the trip to Philadelphia, but did not play. And we're down to a four-point game after the bucket. That was Campbell with the score, six points. And we got contact at the other end. Is that Lewis that's been over? No, that's Votto Morse. Couldn't really tell. And the foul is on Christmas. Picks up his second personal foul. And that will send Moore to the free throw line. He's 8 out of 12 this year. Making 9 out of 13 as he hit one earlier today. Now Lewis will come back in, so he wasn't even on the floor. Moore has eight. He is a transfer from Cincinnati, so we've seen a couple of Cincinnati transfers on the court here today. One for the Towson Tigers women's basketball program, Aliyah Nelson. came in leading the CA at seven assists per ball game. Strickland lost the handle going up and the run out on the left side. Lofting ahead Kamara and he'll come up shy trying to finger roll it in. Here's Edwards into the key hole. Spins at the free throw line and he is fouled going up. He'll earn a couple of free throws as he collides with Granson. Granson has his fourth foul. Okay. Correction, I'm sorry, that, uh, that was not Grants, that was Moore. That's his second foul. Terrence Edwards will go to the free throw line from Atlanta, Georgia, went to Tucker High School, doesn't have any points today, averages 7.2 per game. Eight for 17 at the free throw line, an area to work on, quite obviously, in the early going. That was Justin Amati back in with his eight points. Zach Jacobs will check out. Edwards, 11 points in the opener against Limestone. That sets as his JMU career high. As he is now in the scoring column with his first point. The Dukes up by four. 14, 25 to go. High arcing three-pointer will not fall. Rebound on the floor, battled for, and the Dukes come away with it. It is Amati. Lewis, so he had Christmas, but the space opens up. Here comes Christmas into the corner. Strickland floats one from the baseline, will not go, and the rebound is hauled in by Miller. Miller off to where? He'll drive and lays it up off the glass for two. Miller's been an outside shooter. That's the one... Rare time we've seen him drive the lane, but it was open enough. The Dukes not back there. And four turnovers for the Dukes in the last two and a half minutes. And the Dukes have gone field goal free during that period also. And Morgan State's bench getting into it defensively speaking. And a nearly, Miller nearly stole it away. But when he dribbled the ball, trying to take it away from Lewis, it dribbles on the baseline. So the ball will stay at the JMU end of the court. Gets it inside to Amati, who is fouled. Back 
Foul is called against Campbell. That is his first foul. Looked like a clean block when Miller went up, but Campbell got him with the body beforehand. So Votto, excuse me, make that uh, Justin Amati will go to the free throw line. Body came in five out of eight at the free throw line. That gives him nine. Three point ball game again. Morgan State trying to generate some energy from the bench. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound is into the hands of Edwards. He'll come out with it on his own. Tries to penetrate, probes a bit, finds Lewis. Lewis, long range, three, no good. Rebound. Yeah, it was tapped around a bit. Michael Christmas thought he could get to it, but instead the Bears come away with it, and a foul called against James Madison. So on Terrence Edwards, that's number two on the freshman from Atlanta. That's the fourth team foul. The Bears have three. The inbounds. And splashing it down is Baxter. He's been quiet. Averages nearly 17. That's just his second field goal. He's got six. Christmas tries to penetrate. Here goes Edwards. Finds his way underneath. Comes up with the bucket. His first field goal today. And the Dukes out in front by three after that Edwards make. Top of the circle. There's a three from the top of the key. No good. A rebound comes down to a pair of Dukes. It's Strickland and he gets... Mugged in the backcourt and a hold called for Strickland afterwards. Strickland comes up with his first foul. Jalen Hodge sent back to the playing court by Coach Byington. So Amadi Lewis, Edwards actually switching it up. Amadi Lewis, Edwards, Hodge, Wooden are the five on the floor. Granson, McRae, Pace, Khalid, Campbell, and Ware. And the Dukes called. It's Amadi call for a foul. That is his first and that brings us under 12 minutes, so immediate timeout is coming up. 11.56 to go in this contest. The Dukes hanging on here, 52-49, but a lot of this ball game is left at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. Well, if you're a JMU fan, sixth grade or below, register to win the Top Dog Experience presented by Riddleberger Brothers Incorporated to register for the VIP experience. Visit JMUSports.com, Top Dog. That's a foul. Ooh. A little reaction by a couple of the Morgan State Bears catching the attention of the officials after a holding call is... Charged against Caleb, his second foul. And that is foul number four against the Bears. So they've done a nice job after coming out of the gates. Foul after foul after foul. They've tempered that down a bit. There's the Julian Wooden. Takes the screen. Looks for Amadi on the back. Can't get him there. Here's Here's Wooden 
Drops it off for Amadi. He is bumped going up. No foul, and he misses the shot. Khalid working from the left wing. Pulling up three. Rattles around. It won't go down. And here is Edwards. Edwards top of the circle. Wooden. He'll launch the left-handed three-pointer. Rebound. Pulled in from Amati. Finds Edwards again. Wraps it around. Here is Wooden. And he'll draw a couple of head and shoulder pump fakes. And the contact using those head and shoulders to uh, draw the foul. Troy Baxter has his third personal foul, and it does send Wooden to the free throw line. Julian is 5 of 11 at the stripe this year, shooting two. Wooden was 17 at George Mason, his career high points. That was last year. Dukes were scheduled to play the Patriots this year, but a COVID victim, if you want to put it that way. Both these teams just wanted to get together and play. I mean, after the long break, Dukes for 12 days and 13 days the break for the Bears. And Ware is bumped as he starts to drive. As Edwards has his third personal foul. That is team foul number seven, so it's one in the bonus for Ware. Who has not shot any free throws today, but has uh, hit seven out of the nine that he's connected on or had the advantage of earlier in the schedule. Fifteen points with that make. Lewis plucks that one off the rim. 53-50. Lewis brings it up for the Dukes. Looks for the screen. Gets double teamed. Wooden is open. Another three-pointer from the left hand. Won't go. It's a good-looking shot. At least that was uh, a good look it was. And that's a foul on the Dukes. Wooden one for four. The Dukes three out of 17 on three-pointers. Wooden picking up the foul. That's his third for number 22 of the Dukes, the sophomore from Roanoke. Branson at the free throw line. Six out of eight this year. And he is in the scorebook. Averages 14 points a game. Had a hand injury early in the contest. That may have slowed him down a little bit here today. Hasn't really got into any offensive rhythm. And misses with a offensive board pulled in by Khalid. Now stepping out, the three-pointer from the right wing. That is connected by Moore. He has 11, and the Bears have recaptured the lead with just over 10 minutes to go in this contest. Strickland will try to give it back to the Dukes, and he does. Seven for Terrell Strickland, and for the freshman from Tampa, Florida, that is just his second three-pointer this season. Basketball will get turned over to the Dukes. Under 10 minutes remaining in this contest, this non-conference battle. Lewis wiggles his way through, and he is blocked. Granson, that is his fifth. He is done for the day. Oh, correction, that is his fourth. Oh, that's right, I missed it earlier. That was one that I thought it was Granson. It was Moore. So Granson has four. Hey, 
Wooden at the free throw line. Down low it goes, and Amadi somehow got that ball to work its way through the cylinder. I don't know how he did that. He was so deep on the court. And he whirled around to get that to tumble in. The Dukes lead back out to four. Strickland hitting the deck. Branson, I don't know why he put it on the floor, but he did so. Head fake, and the three-pointer is missed. Edwards grabs the rebound for JMU. Edwards has been there for a lot of those. He's got six. He and Amadi with six rebounds apiece on the floor at the moment. And Wooden, keyhole, three is good. He has nine. And it goes out to a seven-point lead and timeout called by the Bears of Morgan State. And we'll take a timeout also with the Dukes out in front, 61-54. to 54, The three-pointer by Julian Wooden gives the Dukes their current spread. in this ball game the Dukes get a three-pointer from Julian Wooden and that forces Morgan State to take a timeout 61-54 Matt Lewis leading the Dukes on the floor he's got 15 points Amadi with 11 so he's in double figures for the fourth time this year Wooden up to nine as he is three out of seven from the field, two of five on three-pointers. Dukes have hit five out of 19 trades. That's 26%. Dukes coming into the game shooting a 36%, excuse me, 33% from beyond the arc. Morgan State shooting at 42% coming in from beyond the arc. Reach in foul. It's on Edwards. That's five on Edwards. Baxter will shoot a couple here. Baxter, 14 out of 20, 20 for, excuse me, 14 out of 20, more clarity. At 70% this year. Awesome. 
knocks them both down. Five point ball game. Strickland asked by Coach Byington to go get it and bring it up the court for the Dukes. Now it's in the hands of Lewis on the right wing. Lewis will drive, steps through and lays it up. Comes up shy with it. Rebound. Control right comes away with it. Here's the quick run. Baxter will slam it home. He's in double figures with 10, and it's a three-point ball game. Lewis bringing it up. We'll make that uh, Edwards there, other bringing it up for the Dukes. To Amadi. Three freshmen on the floor for the Dukes right now, including Strickland with the ball in his hands. There's Edwards. Lewis launches up the three. No good. Rebound ripped down by Woodson. Had to get position, put the ball on the floor. Amadi comes up with it. He can't score it. Here's Wooden again. Kicks it out. Lewis, uh, he's going to slow it down. 17 on the shot clock. Why not? See if the Dukes can get something out of this possession. Here's Strickland. Eight on the shot clock. Edwards, he'll drive into the keyhole. The kick out, Wooden from the corner. Off the iron, no good. And the Dukes had four looks. Couldn't put it down. Whirling it around. Here's Baxter. His comes up shy. And the carom sharply comes off. And the ball thrown behind. Amati gets behind Edwards. And that stops the clock with 7.05 to go. And a media timeout once again. The under eight, as we call it. So the Dukes with some opportunities to open it up. But the Bears have closed it down. Back with more NCAA men's basketball when we return to Harrisonburg. Glow Fiber and Sintera. One to 58. Bears with the basketball trying to trim into that three point advantage. The Duke's own at the moment. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Miller will skip the pass over to Baxter. Baxter. Slinks his way through, and with the follow-up, can't get it to go, and it's tapped up and in. I think the credit will go to Miller. No, nope, actually, they give it to McCray. Wait a minute. Oh, yes, it is Miller. Here's Lewis. Fights his way through. His ball gets blocked, and Amadi goes up. You heard all kinds of smacking. As he chucks it back up, and he'll go to the free throw line. The foul is on Miller. That is his fourth. You see Amadi go up through the bodies, and he'll get a chance to shoot two. Comes Detorian Ware back in from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, a transfer from the Gamecocks at Jacksonville State. Nobody came out to challenge him at all, and he drops it in. Ware with 18 points, and the Bears retake the lead with just under six minutes to go. They did so. Took the lead uh, just over 10 minutes remaining, but Terrell Strickland came down and hit a three-pointer to give the Dukes the margin the plus side once again. The Dukes will take a timeout, and we'll keep it right here. With uh, 5.43 to go. Dukes have missed their last six shots. No few goals in the last 
Coming up this weekend is JMU women's basketball against the Seahawks of UNCW. That's a Saturday, the first game on Flow Sports in Washington. NBC Washington. And again, coming up at 2 o'clock on Saturday. Dukes and the Seahawks will play again Sunday at 2 o'clock. Here's Lewis. Nobody picks him up. He'll try to hit the drainer at the other end, and he does so. 18 for Lewis. And JMU retakes the lead. Here's the drive for Wright. He is fouled. By Javis Harvey. That's his first foul for Harvey. I want to thank uh, Leonard Haynes, the fourth. He is the media relations director for the Bears for sending us information, materials, and images for his team. And Jason Kreck here at James Madison. Rolls in for right. That's his first point for Sharon Wright Jr., the Wake Forest transfer. Out of Macon, Georgia. careful with those passes on the perimeter and Hodge that looked like there was a little bit of a deflection on that that shot for uh, Wooden that is here comes Ware floats the high shot bounces off the rim rebound is controlled by the Dukes nearly but no picked up and the short is the shot is short but the follow-up is good for Devonish Picks up his third field goal of the day. He's got eight points, and it's a 66-65 Morgan State lead. The Bears hustling on the play and get rewarded for doing so. Here's Lewis, and he is fouled going up by Ware. That's just the first foul for Ware. And that'll send Lewis to the free throw line. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield IMG College under the broadcasting rights granted by James Madison University. Reuse of this presentation is prohibited without the express written consent of JMU and Learfield IMG College. Announcers are provided by James Madison University. As Lewis hits the free throw back into the lineup. Comes Edwards and Lewis. Hangs out at 19 points in his 101st game. And that's on the sideline again. Running out of room from side to side are the Bears. Lewis with 35 20-point games in his career, and he's one shy of adding to that figure. We're tied at 66 apiece. Here's Lewis. Over to Edwards. Edwards will drive. Finds his way to the rim and scores the basketball. Edwards has five. And it's a two-point James Madison lead under four minutes to go. Campbell over here to the right wing. It's Ware. Ware will try to make a move, but Edwards is there to defend. Down inside the paint. Ware will launch the three-pointer top of the key. Rebound fought for and coming away with it. Justin Amati. Amati gives it up to Lewis. Three and a half remaining. Every possession key in a ball game as tight as this one, quite obviously. Lewis will try to drive. He is cut off at the baseline to kick out. Hodge with a three pointer. Rattles in. 
eight points for Jalen Hodge. So he has eight. Christmas with eight, so 16 and out of that duo. Out of the 71 points, 19 for Matt Lewis. Strickland has seven. Wooden has nine. A running shot will tumble in. Devinish, he's in double figures with 10. Devinish in his 67th game has started in 66 of those and the layup is good. For Wright, that's his first field goal. And the Dukes hold on to that 71 to 70 lead. Timeout on the floor. And we'll take a timeout as well. It's our final media timeout. The Dukes have a one-point lead. 222 remains when we return. Fiber.com for your availability. Glow Fiber, Internet of You. 71 to 70. Uh, Matt Lewis leading the scoring for the Dukes. He has 19. Justin Amati, 12 points and 10 rebounds for Justin. So he has his first career double-double. And the 10 rebounds, a career high. He had six against Alice Lloyd. Dukes leading at 71 to 70. Lewis looking for a screen. Oh, he had a chance to get it down inside to Julian Wooden, who had slipped inside, and Edwards goes up, and Baxter rejects that shot. Stops the clock with 11 seconds to go. And the Dukes take a timeout, 30-second timeout, I'm pretty sure, for the Dukes. They want to draw something up here. It's a one-possession game, and they want to make sure they get something out of this. As we hit the 8 o'clock hour, I want to invite you to, uh, if you're a fan of JMU men's basketball, and historically so, uh, it had an interview with the JMU Sports Alumni Podcast published last Wednesday with all-time leading scorer Steve, Sp uh, Steve uh, Steelper. And uh, Steve and I had a good conversation on the 26th of December about his career, how he came to James Madison, and he is the all-time leading scorer. And you can uh, access that. Go to jmusports.com backslash podcast. Also accessible through Spotify and iTunes. Uh, this coming Wednesday, our alumni feature will be Jamie women's basketball player Stacy Todd living out in Colorado. Duke's miss on a three-point try. Tracked down in the corner by Granson. Yeah, it was a good, uh, good chance to talk with Steve. We've also got, uh, later on this month, uh, Pat Dosh and Linton Towns, all from the late 70s, early 80s of JMU men's basketball. Three-pointer is good for Kamara. That's his first three-pointer of the season. It comes at a big time. It gives the Bears a 73-71 lead with 90 seconds remaining. Edwards. Lewis steps back, three-pointer, hard off the iron, rebound, grabbed by Moore. And with a two-point lead, the Bears have possession. They're going to take it into the front court. Looking for the slam, and they get it as the Dukes got lulled to sleep, and Baxter drives it in for a four-point lead with under a minute to go. Timeout called by Lyington and the Dukes. Damn, you just fell asleep defensively. Baxter, they took it into the corner. Looked like they were just going to chew up some of the time. And Baxter sliding in. You'll see him coming in your picture right there. Watch it again. Got enough space. He just put it up there near the rim, and Baxter, without contest from any of the Dukes, easily puts that through the cylinder. And
And next Saturday, JMU, or two weeks from uh, yesterday, that is, uh, two weekends from now, JMU hosting Elon in men's basketball on the 16th. You can watch it on Flow Hoops and on NBC Sports Washington. And don't forget, we do have the Dukes and Florida Atlantic here on Tuesday at 4 o'clock. So another relatively quick turnaround after a long break for the Dukes. We've uh, been getting condensed schedules and long breaks. Condensed and long breaks. That's kind of the way things have gone for the schedule for JMU. Give my thanks to uh, Savannah Marshall and Allie Barefoot for their help as well in getting ready for today's doubleheader. Into the backcourt it goes. Duke's down by four. Here's Lewis. Lays it up and in. An easy bucket for Matt Lewis. Now the Duke's got to get a stop. He's got 21. So 36 times Matt Lewis, 20 points or more in a ball game. That's how you get to be among the all-time scoring leaders at JMU. A two-point game, Dukes do need a stop here. And the ball lost, the Dukes come up with it. Three on two for JMU and tripped. Is Jalen Hodge by Moore, his third foul for Moore and that sends Hodge to the free throw line but it's one and one. That is the ninth foul. Dukes get in there, and losing the ball was Baxter. First shot, no good. Rebound, controlled. And again, it's Granston, and he is fouled quickly in the backcourt. Is Miller Granston again with a banged up right hand. Felt the contact that time. Clock stops at 18.5 seconds to go. And shooting two, that's the 10th team foul against James Madison, so Miller will shoot two this time. He can make it a two possession game. And he does so. Eight points for Miller. Duke's got to hurry. Lewis. And has it swiped away. And the Morgan State Bears starting to feel this one now with 11 seconds to go. Miller, or make that Lewis, losing the handle. Active hands for the Bears. Lewis called for the foul, which is his third. Here's Baxter at the free throw line. Fourteen for Baxter, five for five at the free throw line. A six point ball game but only 11 seconds to go. Down to eight. Wooden takes the three-pointer, partially deflected, rebound for the Bears. Michael Christmas creates the foul, and Baxter goes back to the free throw line. Now, Duke certainly had a chance to come up with the W here today. But the Bears get the run down the stretch. A 13-2 run over the final 242. And they have hit their last four field goals.
Baxter again. Michael Christmas will just dribble across the half court stripe and the Dukes will fall today to the Bears of Morgan State, 80 to 73. As the Dukes were up in this one, let's see here, they were up by five with 3.20 to go with 71-66 on a three-pointer by Hodge. And then uh, after stretch there, 73-71 with 141 to go, the jumper by Kamara. And that put the Bears out in front for good as they pull away down the home stretch. We'll take a brief time out. We'll come back and wrap this one up for you from the Atlantic Union Bank Center with Morgan State defeating James Madison 80 to 73. Over the last three minutes and 20 seconds, the Morgan State Bears outscored James Madison 19 to seven as they uh, come from a five point deficit, 71-66 and defeat the Dukes by the 80 to 73 final. Did I do that math right? No, I did not. Anyway, it is, uh, it is a win for Morgan State. And there's a look at our final numbers. And let me help you out with those. Uh, all in all, as we break it down, the Dukes ended up 46% from the field, 27% uh, on three pointers and 59% at the free throw line. That's one of the Worst shooting performances at the free throw line this year for the Dukes, I'm pretty sure. And Morgan State ends up shooting 39% uh, from the field, 31% on trays, and 72% on three-pointers. See the turnovers, 18 for James Madison, a minus three there. Total rebounds, a minus four. And 16 assists on 27 field goals, pretty good rate, 14 out of 26. That's not bad either, but just not good enough today for JMU to come up with the W. Individual leaders, Lewis finishes with 21 points. Uh, see, for him, that's the 36th time he's had 20 plus points in a ball game in his career. Amadi finishes with a dozen. Uh, he also finished with double figure rebounds, so a double double. And Ware with 18, Baxter 15, Moore 11. Fairly balanced scoring for Morgan State. Tuesday, as they will face the Owls of Florida Atlantic. That is a four o'clock game. We'll have that game for you as well. And scheduled right now for the Bears, they are at Norfolk State to take on the Spartans. Saturday and Sunday, both those games slated for a 2 o'clock start time. Once again, thanks to our crew from Telemedia Productions, John Hodges, John Salem, as well as uh, the rest of the crew, Brian Creasy, helping to direct and produce uh, this second game, as well as the first today, and the rest of the crew from Telemedia Productions. On behalf of all of us at James Madison University, once again, have a happy new year. Thank you for joining us today. It was a split here at the Atlantic Union Bank Center. The women, they defeated Towson 89-85 in their CA opener. And the Dukes on the men's side fall to the Bears of Morgan State 80-73. So long, everyone, from James Madison University. This has been a Learfield IMG College presentation. I'm Kurt Dudley. Have a great Sunday evening.